$250,000. Okay, so, so Connell just walked you through exactly what an idea of what this guy did. His name is Ethan Haskell. He works for FanDuel. He works for DraftKings, but now you have him trading on FanDuel. He won a lot of money. It appears both FanDuel and DraftKings have temporarily, I stress temporarily, banned their employees from playing on other sites. That ban came in today when Fox Business and a lot of other media sites said, what's going on? Are, is this insider trading? Are you cheating? Is this front running? Well, the situation regardless, has exposed a real credibility issue in what has become an industry that Disney has bet on, the parent of this company, 21st Century Fox, has bet on, Major League Baseball, NFL. There is a website called Deadspin. It has the report now about a FanDuel employee who's one of the top 50 winners on DraftKings. His name is Matt Boccio. Okay, so now there are a couple of people who are on this party train. With me now is a guy named Dan Orla, managing director of Game Sports Network, which makes Hot Roster. This is a daily fantasy sports competitor to the other guys, FanDuel and DraftKings. Dan, right off the bat, uh, is the word fantasy more appropriate than ever? Was this whole fairness situation a total fantasy? No, you know, I think we're at a transformational moment this year. There's been a lot of investment dollars that's been put to work here. The industry is going through a period of profound innovation, and it's going to take, uh, there'll be some, you know, moments like this where people will be understanding what the evolving architecture of this market is going to look like. And this is a healthy moment. This is actually good for everybody. Uh, not for people who didn't win, I would argue. And, and I only say that because what you have is a situation where, for example, in sweepstakes, right? In sweepstakes, it always says uh, employees or relatives of employees of this game cannot play. I know that this is zero regulated industry right now because it's so young. It's in its incipient stages. But clearly, these people who work there figured out a way and an algorithm to game it and win over other people who are out there believing it was a fair landscape and a flat landscape. Well, I, look, I, I think we could probably draw the analogy to financial services. I think that's what we're talking about here is okay. how is this industry in its inception analogous to financial services. We're using the same terminology and I think that regulatory framework that's evolved from, you know, for the last 25 years in financial services, maybe a uh, framework that the industry will eventually look to adopt in helping support the growth of this market and to inspire confidence the consumers. Can, can I ask you quickly, that Dan, the market have, has integrity. Have you seen any increase in traffic on hot roster? I guess from other fans who feel that maybe FanDuel and DraftKings might not be so fair. Well, you know, I, I'd say that we've always viewed Hot Roster as a Generation 2 game and that it's always been a compliment. We've, been, uh, we've gotten nice compliments from uh, the majors, the companies you mentioned. Uh, some of their players have said that they think that we do a very good job of providing the insights into what fantasy matchups should look like for the week. And we've been able to attract, we think, growth based on the value proposition that we're offering to our customers. Uh, we believe that our customers all have the same equal opportunity to win. Okay, and that's are you, been gonna, one are of you going to now to prevent your employees from trading on other sites and doing this with their information that they happen to have from being an employee? I don't trade uh, on our own site and I don't trade on other sites. Our employees look at this much in the same way that you would expect okay. any market-oriented company, which is the integrity of the platform is more important than any one individual. Dan Orlo, Hot Roster Managing Director. Uh, it's a story that is just starting to bloom, and it could possibly explode all over this industry. But right now, Hot Roster still standing tall. You cannot escape two minutes of commercials on Football Sunday without seeing FanDuel and DraftKings promotions. They spent $130 million combined over just three months, a third of it on that first weekend of NFL team playing. Even with two team owners, Robert Kraft and Jerry Jones, they're investors in DraftKings. We need to tell you, we call both of them. We have not heard back from them. We can't say no comment. But we've gotten a no comment from Major League Soccer, and no one returned our calls about this at the NFL, the NHL, and the NBA. However, Major League Baseball is saying this, quote, 
We were surprised to learn that DraftKings even allows its employees to participate in daily fantasy games. We have reached out and discussed this matter with them. Where do the leagues and other partners go from here? We bring in Tony Pontoro. He's a longtime Anheuser-Busch executive, a sports marketing legend, once considered one of the most powerful men in sports. Hey, Tony, you're still powerful to us. And I need to ask you right off the bat, are you going to anticipate that it's not criminal yet because there are no regulations against this, but a, a class action civil claim? Oh, there may very well be. And it has to be regulated. This has become a billion-dollar business. It's not really fair... For, for Major League Baseball to say they're surprised. They invested in DraftKings. They should have set up rules and guidelines to make sure that things didn't happen. You know, this is right on the borderline of gambling. People are spending money. All these leagues, all these owners want a piece of this action, and they felt they could come Disney, in legally Disney to do it. Disney jumped in. 21st Century Fox is partnering here. Did these companies jump into bed too quickly with daily fantasy sites? They I don't blame them for getting in early, but I do blame them for not having controls early. This is too important for the image. They're spending all these millions of dollars, billions of dollars, in the image and the trademarks of their leagues and their broadcasting companies. You have to protect it. Why are you putting it in the hands of 30-something entrepreneurs that is on the line of gambling and letting them take you down a bad path without controls? Connell, when there's, when there's a land grab early... Companies do move very quickly because you can lose if you don't. I'm just wondering if now the companies like, well, Disney was even rumored to be outright planning to buy one of these sites. Do you think now that they're stuck holding the bag because maybe FanDuel and DraftKings will keep their powder dry and not use all this money that they've been using for ad buys that were guaranteed maybe to Disney and 21st Century News Corp? Boy, they were spending a lot of money, too, on those ad buys, a ridiculous amount of money. I think you referenced uh, the $80 million in the first week by DraftKings alone. Yeah. And 100 million total um, over that time frame. I mean, we're in kind of, and this has been talked about a little bit, but we're in we're uncharted territory to some degree because if you talk to these sports leagues over the years, they're going to want to kind of distance themselves from gambling, even though they know, and the NFL knows uh, as the best example, that one of the main reasons the sport of football is so popular in this country is because of gambling. Everybody knows that. It's a, but they will try to distance themselves from it. Now, the question is is this, as you allude to, on the borderline? of gambling. The debate is whether this is gambling or skill, or has it crossed that? And I think there's going to be a lot of discussion over the next however many weeks and months about whether this is a game of skill or it's gambling. And you can make arguments on both sides, but um, I think you make a strong argument that it's gambling, is my point. It doesn't pass the smell test, Tony. No, not okay, at all. this is zero regulation. We stress that so no laws have been broken, but it doesn't pass a smell test. There's a lot of eyebrow raising. We were calling it graft kings. Yeah. I mean, graft is when you use unscrupulous uh, ways to for personal gain. Is this front running? Is this I had the information in advance and I traded knowing that information and I beat the rest of the, of everybody? Oh, absolutely. Involved? And even if you tell the employees not to bet on other fantasy sites. Am I gonna, is that going to stop the employee from telling their wife, right. their husband, their uncle, their yeah. brother? That's insider trading. That's, I mean, that's insider what happens. Trading. Yeah, that's what happens. Everywhere. And anybody want to bet how long it takes before Congress calls I think all kinds of Some you know. of them are already getting involved, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It'll be so interesting to see. Tony Pontoro, Kermser Pontoro, founder 